very blessed to have known Professor Fosoma. I am privileged that in my lifetime I've experienced the love of two fathers, a thing that many would be lucky to experience. He has drawn me under his wings and given me some love and protection which has translated to my daughters who grew up not knowing their grandfather and have looked up to him like the grandfather they didn't have. They have enjoyed his big bear hugs and I've enjoyed those hugs too. How many people will send you a text message with only two words, you day? And yet those two words mean much more than just two. Because he sincerely hasn't seen you and missed you and wants to know how you're doing. Of course, when you show up at his door a few days after that, you know that you have to spend a long time with Professor to clear all the arrears. Otherwise, you'll be in trouble for a long time. But his trouble was a trouble that we loved. It was just so nice to see him change from being so sad that you haven't been around and wanting you to stay for so long when you had to leave. I have received wise counsel from Prof. He has straightened me. He has reminded me that I could do better. And I am pleased for how far I have been, just knowing that there's somebody around who will tell you as it is. I'm Prof's adopted daughter. Prof is like a mentor, a special advisor. I run to him anytime I'm in trouble. Um, he's my confidant. The things that I will not be able to tell anybody, I feel very confident in telling Prof. Actually, Prof is more like a godfather to me. Normally, our fathers will get angry with us when we make the mistakes or we disgrace them or we do something that is not. But for him, he will advise, he will call me, he will advise me, he will tell me, well, you didn't do this right. Next time, you'll have to tackle it in another way. And it's been like that. He, he's one person I can count on. If anybody should ask me, if anything should happen to you, if you are in trouble, whatever, who would you call? He's one person I'm confident that if I mention his name and you run to him, he will stop whatever and come to my aid. He's been like that with my children and my friends. I can't thank him enough. The word thank you, I don't think will be enough for proof. I'm very grateful for him. He's been there all the time, especially when my son got hurt. He was like a backbone in anything. And then there's, there's no words to describe my relationship with Prof. It's like an angel God has actually sent on my behalf to be there to guide and protect me and my children like for the rest of our lives. Those were not tributes to the memory of the dead, but a befitting eulogy for the living an expression of love, gratitude, and an appreciation for Professor George Kofi Ansan Ufusuama at 80. Yes, my brother George went to school at St. Boys School, government school then. Uh, and then to Adaraka Junior School. And then went to Achimota from Standard 5 and did brilliantly. I mean, he won many prizes and it was clear that he was going to go somewhere. His brilliance was obvious. And um, in a sense, he was there for a role model. And he was doing so well that uh, he sort of forced all of us to try to emulate his sense of excellence. Um, what I learned from him growing up in this regard is that one should not rest on the laurels. In spite of his having 
a very keen academic mind. He also worked extremely hard. I remember when he was uh, at Achimota, going into sixth form, that there was one subject he had not taken, but which he needed uh, in order to have A-level results which would enable him to have his profession. I have never seen anybody study so hard in my life. He did not take any chances in spite of the fact that he was so brilliant. He worked day and night and came out with flying colors. And then he was given a scholarship and went to Southampton and also did extremely well, got a first class in his subject and then went to Cambridge University and continue with the law. All his life he was very studious, very serious, always searching, finding out about different things. So that is on the academic side. I mean there was no doubt that he was a brilliant uh, student in whatever he did, but he chose law from Cambridge after that. He went to uh, do a course in, in Holland, I think, I'm, I'm not sure, but he did work in postgraduate legal studies and he was offered a job in the United Nations. Professor G.K.A. Ofosuama has a rich working experience. On completion of his legal studies in Holland, he was employed by the United Nations. In the United Nations, um, you have opportunity to work with uh, different nationalities. Um, there's one story he's told uh, us which touched us so much that, you know, Doug Hammarskjöld died in a, a plane crash in the Congo. You know, Kofi Ansah was expected to have been on that flight. It was something which held him back. And um, I think God preserved him so that he will continue to mentor the many people who have walked through his life. He came home to Ghana it was because at that time Ghana had become independent and everybody was talking about Ghana and he felt that he must come and help. That's why he eventually left the UN to come home. He served the country in various ways as Director of Special Branch, Chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Chairman of the Regional Lands Commission in addition to his law practice. And it should not be forgotten that Professor G.K.A. Ofusuama is a former Dean of the Law Faculty, University of Ghana, Legon. I met Professor Ofusuama as a student in the Faculty of Law in 1966 when he was teaching there and not too long after as a student he, he likes people who are precocious <laughs> and talkative so he became a sort of mentor to me he said I had potential and I could go very far if I concentrated on my work and so he encouraged I wasn't the only one there were quite a number of us that he encouraged. Every year, he will scout and see those who he thinks have potential and encourage them. I came to an interview for law admission in 1969. And uh, I think he was on the panel. I discovered that afterwards. But he was the one who asked me the question. He asked me two questions, and I suspected he had follow-up questions. To he expected some answers, specific answers, and he had follow-up questions. So I didn't give him the answers I thought he was expecting. And, and then he asked me to go away. I left the room with the, the laughter of the other panelists in my ears. I thought I had flunked because the first two people before me spent on average 40 minutes, and I was the only four about five minutes. 
apparently because I wasn't giving the right answers. Then I got an admission. I came and I was told, uh, Mr. Fuswama is looking for you. First day we arrived in the faculty. So I went there with trepidation. And then he asked me, after asking me to see, he asked me, did you actually give those answers deliberately? So I asked him which answers. <laughs> and then he remembered. So I told him the truth that I thought he had follow-up questions, so I didn't want to get myself into trouble. And that seemed to be a began a friendship which has lasted all these years. He got very attracted to people like Busia and others. So when Busia took power, they got him into the uh, security service. And that obviously didn't do him good because he ended up being assumed to be trying to do a coup. He, he, he wasn't. And uh, Achampong and others fixed. In fact, originally they wanted to even kill him. Uh, but when he got to Achampong, fortunately our parents knew some people who knew Achampong well. So he carried the story of George too. And, and he, they realized that they were going to do the wrong thing. So they just imprisoned him for seven years. And uh, it was mainly spent in second day. When I came home to teach at the University of Ghana, he was actually in jail, which upset me very much. And I remember going with my husband to second day because that's where he was. And we, I had to go through the process of getting a permit to see him, blah, blah, blah. And then I went to see him. And it upsets me even more to see him in prison garb and so on. So in my own little way, I mounted my campaign to get him out of jail. I've never told anybody this. This is the first time. <laughs> and I had some real contacts somewhere which I used. And I'm happy to say that finally, in addition to all the other pressures, he was released. So when he came back, it was as if he hasn't been anywhere at all, and that he's been carrying on. I met Professor Ufusuama in 1983 at the University of Ghana. He was then a lecturer at the law faculty. I did not have much contact with Prof to like join in in his chambers after school. That is the Ghana Law School. Prof continued to be a teacher and a professor in the chambers. He would advise on solicitors' work as well as advocacy. And for Prof, he has one basic principle that to come out as a good lawyer you should always have courtroom practice. Prof tried to encourage everybody to go to the courtroom. Immediately, you start practice. I remember one day when I was given a brief to face big giants in the profession. They were Idi Kom and Alajete of blessed both of blessed memory. I went to Prof and told him how frightened I was to face these people in chambers. He reluctantly agreed to join me in court, but not without his usual saying, Bruce Obama. We went to court and he conquered. But after that day, he told me I will never go to the court premises again. Bruce, now you are on your own. As a young lawyer, you should learn how to practice and to face big names in the game. Within the legal field, he was teaching law 
but he was the law as well. He knew it inside out. And many times when I have dropped in on him, I have seen lawyers I respect coming to consult him and seek his advice. And that has always been a great source of uh, pride to me. Professor Ofusu Amar's name alone could open doors. You go to the ministries, you go to the courts, you go to the financial institutions, and you just say, I'm coming from Professor Ofusu Amar's chambers. A miracle will immediately happen. Your things will be done in no time. The prof himself is a crowd puller. Once he takes you out for business, for fun, for parties, for funerals, you expect that everybody will come to close to Prof. I can only wish him a lot of good luck um, for the remaining part of uh, his life. I know he has been lucky in Elizabeth, who takes very good care of him and I want on behalf of the whole family to thank her for her faithfulness to our dear, dear cousin. Ours, him and I, ours is a 44 year old love affair that should really be of interest maybe to Hollywood. It's just that I can't imagine who will play the role of Professor George Kofi and South Oswama. That's why I won't try to interest them. But in 44 years, it's a relationship that has undergone a lot of turmoil. And, but throughout, the love has endured. He's a good man for a woman to have because you, are, you know exactly where you stand with him. He doesn't leave you in any doubt and you are wondering, hey, so does this please him, does this not please him? We have a son, Cranton, who is like a jewel, really, even if I say so myself. He's the kind of son that anybody would want to have. He's, yes, he's a professor, but he's mostly a daddy. He's somebody who is worried about not just his children, but about everybody and wanting them to develop, to grow, to ask questions, to be free. And he's very concerned that you do the right thing and that you and that you find your way in the world. So he's very interested in everybody, in his children, and in making the world work. Um, he's been always pushing me, always pushing me to do better than anything that I can imagine. And he pushes me, and that's why I love him, that he, he really worries about me and about everybody else. That's just the kind of father that he is. He's father not just to me, but to everybody. He has all these adopted daughters and sons. As a child, the professor used to come next door and we were told not to make any noise because he didn't like noisy children. But as an adult, I've grown to love him very much. We have the same middle name, Ansa and Ansa, so I call him my brother, but he's more like a father. Professor is the most intelligent person I've ever met. He knows something about everything. He teaches me menus and recipes to cook for him. He helped me with my real estate matters, in my publishing matters, in my gas matters. And we have a laugh all the time. The professor is a very fun person. He is a really special man. One of the first things I noticed when I met him is that he's had so much experience and traveled all over the world. So anytime I thought I had something new to say about something I'd observed or something that I'd done, he always had a story that could top it by far. And even the other day, there was something in the news and I started to mention the little I know about it and he already had a long detailed story and account for us. And we all just sat there and listened and realized that we really haven't seen anything of the world yet. 
Professor G.K.A. Ufusuama is an affable, generous, and a happy family man. He has his own biological children. Apart from that, he has many adopted children who, in one way or the other, benefited and are still benefiting from his fatherly advice and largesse. He has more adopted daughters than sons, I think. He has, he has sons also, you know, like... There are very few of students who pass through his hands who, because of this business of taking over your life, he's planning, arrange for them to go and do postgraduate, arrange for them to go and do this. And if you're, he says, have you built a house? You must buy land, you must, you know, get a loan so that you can build a house. So because of that, and these daughters that he has, it's better that you just get them to become your daughters too. That's how I've, I've dealt with them. And I, you know, I'm the lucky one because you see, they are, because they are much younger than me, they know where to get clothes. They clothe me half the time. I think this top that I'm wearing, one of them gave it to me. Uh, most tops that I have, some, they would give it to me. They know about shoes, they know about where I should go and do my hair, they know about if I want something to buy, I don't know where anything is in this country. One of those girls would tell me, oh, go to this shop, go to the other shop, or, oh, oh, don't worry, we'll buy it for you. They'll bring it, I'll pay them. Kinte, for example. I have more kinte than is good for me. But that's because Doris knows a weaver and is interested and she would get them made for me. Prof is awesome. He is dependable. He is an inspiration to many, especially to his family, his friends, and even people who just walk into his life. For close to 25 years, if not more, I've known him as a patient, I have known him as a lawyer, and I've also known him as a very good friend of my family. As a patient, I think he is unique in the sense that he follows his doctor's instructions very well, except that he will usually will have a complaint about his doctor as well. And his favorite complaint is that I don't give him injections when he comes to see me. And I try to convince him that the day that he requires an injection, I will not hesitate in giving him one, if not two. He also says that I don't like writing medicines, but that is true, because it's not every ill that you require to take a pill. He has done very well, and I think there's a lot more we can expect from him in the coming years. What he doesn't know is that occasionally I pass through his house in the morning at a time I know he is having breakfast just to make sure that he is eating the right stuff. Although I am guilty of sometimes spoiling him with things that I know he likes very well. He doesn't eat a lot, but he insists on certain types of food and he would describe in detail what it is he wants to eat, how he wants the fish. The fish has to be fresh, fresh to the point of jumping in the soup, you know, fresh like it's live and it's jumping in the soup. He wants cheese, a certain type of cheese. It has to be. He's very particular about the type of food he wants. He will tell you, oh, as for him, he will eat anything. But it's not true. Of course he will eat in other words, if you put something there he doesn't like, he's not going to get up and go. He would eat a bit, but he's particular about the food that he likes. What we talk about his diet, but uh, I cannot put him on diet because I know he has uh, what I'll describe as very sophisticated taste for certain things. I mean, he 
if you give him salmon, he will smile very broadly. If you give him cheese, ah, he's over the moon, especially Stilton uh, cheese, you know, the kind that has that funny smell. Oh, yes, he loves things, and I, I don't hold it against him. I subscribe to the feeling that uh, once in a while we must indulge in the things that we like, but not overindulge, and he does not overindulge. Uh, I also know that uh, he is very conscious about his... Uh, what he eats and uh, how he exercises and uh, it gives me confidence that uh, we can draw many more miles out of him um, in the coming years. As a lawyer, he's been very useful to me in my professional life and also in the life of my family life. As a friend, I have learned a lot from him. And one of the things that my family and I will always treasure is his visits on the 26th of December every year for the last 20 years plus. It's something that he looks forward to and we always make sure that it happens. So in the next four days, I'm expecting to see him with Aunt Elizabeth, Cranting, Abner, and their child in our house again to celebrate what has become a tradition between the Oforeje family and the Ofusuama family. Professor, happy 80th birthday. In Chiyoyote, as a letter woman to a letter man, God bless you. Happy birthday. Thank you for everything you do every day for all of us, especially for me. I am blessed to have met you and I thank God for you every day. Have a very good 80th birthday and I'm going to party hard on your account. God bless. On this occasion, I'd like to wish Prof all the very best that he will live long, enjoy good health, and be around and continue to give us all the love that we are not able to give back to him as much as he gives to us. Professor, happy birthday. May this day and all the days that follow be as joyful and a blessing to you as you have been to me and my daughters. Happy birthday. On Prof's 80th birthday, I wish him all the best. I wish him good health. I wish him all the strength and he should still go on being nice to us. We'll pray that he will live longer he will live for another 10 15 years we thank him not i'm not just thanking prof on his birthday for myself but for all of us all the household we say a big thank you prof was god sent prof just for people like us and we wish him all the best he has a very good heart he is dictatorial sometimes but that's his nature and he wouldn't like me saying that he's a dictator by it sometimes. <laughs> but that's his nature. But he's a very lovable person. And um, we all love him. My family and I love him very much. And we wish him a very happy 80th birthday. We are all excited to be part of his 80th birthday. This is uh, Professor Fusuama, uh, a giant in our family. I cannot but repeat what I've said, that uh, in our family, he has been a true giant. We are very blessed by God that he gave us such a fantastic person who we can count on as a member of our family. I was the eldest of six of us. He was number three. There was a sister between us. But he was my closest friend all, all, all our lives. And uh, we haven't had any major, uh, he showed deference where it was needed. And uh, I think it's been, I've been very lucky to have him as a brother because he, he will give you advice genuine and not competing with anybody and so on. And uh, 
on this point, I wish him a happy birthday. You've changed many lives, and one of them is mine. And all that I can ask for you now is God's blessings, good health, long life, and please, the sharp brain that you have, continue to be that sharp, and we'll be there for you. Thank you.